Mm. I want you to think back. When we had a look at these all the way back at the start of term, we noticed that any time you see something algebraically, pretty much any time, you can also represent that visually. And so, you know, y equals 3, or y is greater than 3, this equation, or this inequality, we can do something which you might remember we called plotting on the number line. So if this was the y number line, this guy here could be the t number line or the x number line or anything you like, if we said y equals 3, this is our y here, then to represent y equals 3, this one point, we just put a big fat dot on 3. We're like, there we go, I plotted it, okay? But when you have a look at an inequality like this guy on the right hand side, y is not just a particular number, it's a whole bunch of numbers, right? It could be 4, or 5, or 8, or a million, or 3.001. And so we indicate that variety of different solutions by not just drawing a dot. What would I actually draw on the number line for this? An arrow. Okay, I'm definitely going to have an arrow of some kind. What else am I going to have along with that? Yeah, there's going to be a line, actually, strictly speaking, this is called a ray, but I'll come back to that in a second. And Gary, what am I going to finish this off with? A hollow circle, thank you very much. Let's piece this together. Why is it hollow and not filled like the original one? Okay, good. I'm not including the actual boundary, three. But then I'm like, you know what? All these other values, this is the... Um, an interval starts and ends somewhere, a line goes on forever in both directions, a ray, we don't talk about them very much, but it starts somewhere and then it goes forever in a particular direction. All these values here, on and on and on and on, they all satisfy this inequality. So here's the idea, right? An inequality, there's a bunch of answers, so we draw a whole area there. An equation, like this, there's like one spot where it happens. Now, this is just on the number line, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to go from one dimension into two. So now underneath this, what I'd love you to write with me is to consider, let's give an example like this. Y is greater than 2x minus 1, and beneath it, because I've got not just a y or an x, but I've got a y and an x, I need two dimensions. I need a Cartesian plane to represent this. So go ahead and draw for me an x and a y axis, please. Hiccups are no fun. Hiccups are not fun. Okay, now once you've got that Cartesian plane, look up. And that'll signal to me that you're good to go. Rulers, very useful. Okay. All right, looking good. It's okay if it's not finished. Can I put you, get you to put your pens down for a minute? Um, if you have not drawn your Cartesian plane yet, that's all right. I'll give you time to do that in a minute. So here's my Cartesian plane with an x and a y axis. Now, think back to when we did the number line, just up the top, right? See this guy here? There's this space that I've highlighted in which all of the solutions that I want live, right? The 4 and the 5 and the million and the 3.001, they're all on this line, okay? But importantly, the boundary of this line is this equation here. Let me say that again. The boundary... Oh, that's okay. Hiccups are no fun. The boundary of this inequality is this equation, okay? So if the boundary of an inequality is just the same thing but you put an equal sign in there, the boundary of this inequality, whatever it looks like, is going to be this equation, y equals 2x minus 1. When I say equals, I get a straight line, right? In fact, we're going to draw this on here in a second. But importantly, this is the boundary line for this, just like this is the boundary line for this. So Draw for me y equals 2x minus 1, but, and this is a bit unusual. Sorry. It's okay, it's fine. It's, I'm trying to yawn and don't, it's, <laughs> don't feel bad for you, what your body's doing. This line here that we're going to draw, could you please draw it as a dotted line for me? Okay, draw it in dotted and I'll tell you why in a second. Now, I've drawn this line dotted, and the reason why I'm doing that is because this is the boundary line. We're used to having dotted lines mean asymptotes in graphs, but they, we sort of run out of ways to indicate what's going on, so we're still going to use a dotted line for this. Now, when you have a look at this first thing, right, the point versus this ray over here, the whole idea is 
each of these, like it's like a whole bunch of dots. I'm just too lazy to draw an infinite bunch of dots, right? Each of these dots is a solution to this guy. Right? Y equals 4 is a solution, Y equals 5 is a solution, Y equals 6, and on and on and on. Okay? So there's a bunch of values for not just Y, but X and Y that are solutions to this. Okay? I'll give you an example, because I need an X and a Y together. I think if we put in X equals 0, and also Y equals 0, I think we'll be able to make um, a statement out of this, and we're going to work out, is it true? Or is it false? Is it actually included in my solutions or not? Okay. So if I put in x equals 0 and y equals 0, what does the left-hand side become? Zero. zero. Right. That's the left-hand side. In fact, I'm just going to write left-hand side equals 0. What about the right-hand side? What do you get on the right-hand side? You get 2 times, uh, two times 0 take away 1, which last I checked was negative 1. Okay. Now, in this case, is the left-hand side greater than the right-hand side? Yes. yes. It is, right? So in this, for this value of x and this value of y, the left-hand side is indeed greater than the right-hand side. That's what I wanted. That's what this is, right? So in other words, x equals 0, y equals 0, where is that on our Cartesian plane? Uh, origin. That's the origin, right? Right there, that guy. This is a solution to our inequality, just like, say, that point there, if that was 4, that would be one of our solutions. I can find another one. Someone want to give me a point that I can test out? An x and a y. One. x equals, one. I heard a 1. I need a y to go with it. Can someone give me a y value? One. Sure, why not? Okay, let's give it a go. What's the left hand side going to be equal to? 1. one. The right hand side is going to be equal to? Zero. Zero. One. When y one. equals 1, when x equals 1, I think it's going to be 2 lots of 1 take away 1 which the last I checked was 1. It's OK. Is the left-hand side greater than the right-hand side? It's not. In this case, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So that's a dud. That doesn't fit my original inequality. Now, where is that? Where is 1, 1 on uh, here? Higher than zero. Hmm. One, one. Now, 1, 1 is an interesting point. Because if I have this right, I think it is not on this side of the line, nor is it on that side of the line. I think 1, 1 is on the line itself, right? And that's a point that I don't, I don't want. It didn't work, right? So I'm like, eh, that's no good, OK? I'm going to give you two more, and I want you to test just like I have done, right? You're going to get an x and a y. That's right. That doesn't sound like a hiccup to me. Anyway. Someone else? OK, here's the x and the y that I would like you to test, please. Let's go with x equals 0, y equals 2. And x equals 1, y equals negative 2. Can you test those out for me? Focus, people. Focus. OK. I've given you new x and y. OK, give it a go. I want you to show me the working. I need the working. OK? The working's what I need. Do you need a ruler? Oh, OK. Yeah, they're in. The, we had a boy who had a nosebleed, so. Oh, no, they're still there. It's OK. All right, so we're looking for an x and a y. I want you to put them in and tell me, do the left-hand side and the right-hand side have the relationship that we want? Okay, can you give that a go, please? Can you pop these in? Pop these in and tell me if you get what you get for the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Can you do that for me? I'm going to get to that. That's where I'm going next. I'm getting two and negative one. Two and negative one? Yep. Okay. Um, this is our first one here x equals zero, or third one actually, y equals two. I've got two and negative one. Is the left hand side greater than the right hand side? Yes. 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 So this is a tick. So before I move on to the last one, where is x equals 0, y equals 2? It's going to be x equals 0. I'm going to count up. That's 1, 1, 2. There we go. That point there. That one's OK. That one's OK. I'm not even going to put ticks beside them. OK. And then the very last one, x equals 1, y equals negative 2. On the left hand side, it's just 
Negative 2, right? It's just the y value. What do you get on the right hand side? One. Yeah, two lots of one take away one, which is one. Is the left hand side greater than the right hand side? No, in fact, it's the other way around. You're like, no, nope, busted. Okay, where is that? Where is that? Two comma negative one. Um, it's two and negative one. Did I write the other way around? Oh, sorry. One and negative two. So one's about there, negative two's about here. And that spot didn't work. Okay. Now, I could keep on doing this, but as you can see, it's a very time consuming process. Do you notice anything about where the points are that work and where are the points that don't work? Okay. Yeah, you can say it two different ways. You can say, um, see these points that work? They're to the left of this boundary line. Yeah. Or you can also say they're above the boundary line. Whereas over here, you're like, this is no good. That's no good. It's right on there. If you tested any of these, I think you'll find they don't work. right? So just like we did here, and we sort of drew a whole bunch of points all together. If you've got another color there, this will really help. I'm going to shade in a region that represents all of those points put together. Does that make sense? That's just like this line over here. So here's my region. It looks like this. Jermaine said to the right, or just as easily Raston said above. So any point in this region actually will satisfy this inequality. Okay? You can take any x or y over here, any x or y here, 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 and it will turn out. You'll get a tick, right? It's going to be happy. Okay? Now, you remember at the beginning I said we drew this line as dotted. And the reason why is because is this line itself included? Do points on the line itself work? And we actually tested one out and we were like, oh, it doesn't work. Right? So that dotted line is kind of like the equivalent of this hollow circle. It's like saying, yeah, all the way there, but not there itself. Okay? Now, what I'd like you to try out, this is just with a straight line. I started off with something easy. I'd like you guys to have a look at this. This is example two. Okay? I'd like you to graph or try and work out what would y is less than x squared look like. So I'm just going to remember for you how we began this. We drew the boundary. What's the boundary for this inequality, this region? What's the boundary going to be? <coughs> It's just the equation, right? Turn the inequality, turn the inequality into an equation, which in this case would be y equals x squared. That's the boundary. So you know what that looks like. Go ahead and draw it. Draw it dotted because we're not sure if it's going to be included in the end. Though there's a clue to show you that whether it is or isn't. And then just like we did before, find a point. Test it. Tell me whether it works or whether it doesn't. And then see if you can work out where the region should be. Okay?